Join me this October where I'll be celebrating Halloween. 31 zine reviews in 31 days. Joining me will be my friend Beanie. Welcome to another edition of Halloween. There is only 10 more days left to enter our contest for a $200 uh, store credit at Exalted Funeral, among other prizes. So now is your chance to uh, visit uh, daikugames.com and uh, enter into the contest. And uh, today joining me, as always, is Beanie. Beanie, how are we doing today? Tired. Tired again. Well, we're going to have to get you some new... Uh, strings to pull there. Today we are going to uh, review Liminal Horror, which is perfect for the uh, Halloween season. So if you have not uh, heard about this, uh, basically it is a game that uh, is inspired and uses the SRD of Cairn, which we've uh, previously reviewed as part of Halloween. So check the link above that I'll add. Uh, so let's get into what exactly uh, Liminal Horror is by Goblin Archives and it is published by Exalted Funeral. Liminal Horror is a classless, rules-light system that eschews leveling for high lethality and narrative growth. Players act as investigators navigating a modern world full of terrible and unknowable things that hide in the spaces between looking for a way in. Developed in a modern cosmic horror hack of Yohai Gal's Cairn, inspired by Into the Odd and Nave, it adds a stress and stress fallout system that warps and uh, warps characters the closer they get to the abyss. Published by Exalted Funeral, illustration by Zach Hazard Volpen. And it's under uh, Creative Commons 4.0 and interior images are public domain. So Liminal Horror, I know that uh, there is this uh, Halloween uh, bundle going on right now and you can get all the Liminal Horror uh, books at a discount if you get the whole bundle and that's the pdf versions so let's kind of dive in and take a look uh so as uh mentioned before they there's some acknowledgments uh names that probably would be very familiar to the uh, osr crowd uh yohai gal chris mcdowell uh who also has uh, been a uh, guest on my show and i will put a link up there as well uh ben milton uh for nave and uh, maze rats we did uh, also a review of nave earlier in halloween uh, Xenio for adapting Maze Rats and Magic to Cairn. Uh, cover illustrations, as talked about, uh, Zach Hazard Volkman. Um, writing a layout by Goblin Archives, uh, otherwise known as Nick Erickson, and published by Exalted Funeral. So here's our table of contents, everything from modern cosmic horror. So one of the things I appreciate about this, and, and I don't know if it's the intention, is sometimes uh, I personally feel that the Cthulhu mythos and cosmic horror um, is a little too tightly connected. And I like the idea of uh, not always being Cthulhu, um, personally myself, that I like just a little bit more X-Files in, in my kind of modern day uh, horror storytelling. That's just a personal preference. And I don't know if that's the intention, but uh, the fact that they haven't actually said Cthulhu um, makes me possibly think that. So you've got all of the table of contents, uh, modern cosmic core they called their gm a facilitator and i know uh, a lot of people kind of balk at different names for gms and some people you know there's everything from wardens to uh, conductors and and that kind of thing i i actually kind of like it when people put a personal spin on what the the gm is and it's so interchangeable now that people kind of just get it um i've heard everything from arbiter to facilitator to the as referee to everything else so anyways facilitator in this one there's uh some overview about you know player's choice and it probably uh relays to the osr kind of environment of you know players do have choice in the game it's not a railroad uh, stress followed it's a little bit unique to this game compared to Karen, uh, where there's like a stress mechanism. No classes, once again, very familiar to a lot of OSR fans. Uh, growth, and there's no leveling, it's just your character growth. The weird, uh, Liminal Horror is designed to be set in a modern city. Characters slowly learn of the weird and dangerous things hidden in the dark. They will bend or break under the weight of the unknown. And the old powers are bound in the deep, far, far, far away spaces. Um, and once again, uh, 
Cthulhu-esque, but not in name. And I, I kind of like that. And uh, death, it's dangerous out there. Be careful. Here's uh, some principles for facilitators. Some of these would probably be very familiar. A lot of games that have used the uh, Karen SRD uh, incorporate these. I don't necessarily know if there's like any uniqueness in comparison, but these are very uh, good overviews of what facilitators and players should do before or prepare themselves mentally for uh, playing a game in the OSR style, uh, specifically to the uh, Karen into the odd mechanisms. Uh, character creation. So we have ability scores here. We have strength, dexterity, and control. Control is a new um, uh, term, uh, and it's basically willpower from uh, into the odd and uh, Karen, but it's actually called control here, a suitable uh, re replacement. Hit protection, hit points, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not necessarily health. It is, uh, can be recovered uh, after a few moments. Investigator details. So we will go through this where you roll back uh, tributes of background in your starting gear and then the party. So let's get started. Let's make an investigator. Let's uh, choose a name that uh, best fits. Well, uh, let's just go with, uh, hey, Beanie, let's name, the, name it after you. So Beanie, Mc, Beanie McMaster. That's what we're going to do. Let's see what you are. Let's roll a d20. Oh, on the angle. Five. We are going to be a medic. That's our background. Let's get to know our characters. Roll d10 or choose. I always like to roll because it's just more interesting. Seven. You survived an attack that you cannot explain. Okay. Ideology and beliefs. What is your character's initial ideology and beliefs? What lens do they use to interpret the world and guide them toward action? Once again, that's a D10. I rolled a one. Everything has a rational explanation as in, and is rooted in science. So that's our ideology and belief. And then we have a uh, list one significant person to the investigator. What is their relationship? Give them a name and brief description. Uh, list one contact the investigator had, what is contact's area of expertise, and what is her relationship to it. Uh, so let's uh, once again roll a d10, and we rolled a five protege. And um, I think we roll again and have a second one, which is a online associate. So we're part of a old uh, chat group that talked about uh, conspiracy theories, perhaps. Character traits. So we have physique. I am curvy, or I should say Beanie McMaster is curvy. Our virtue, is, which is optional, is courageous. Our face is sunken. Curvy, sunken face, that's interesting. Flaw, which is also optional, is a five. Greedy. Speech, six, gravelly. Misfortune, which is also optional, four, condemned. And then we have our starting gear. Uh, there is D20 to choose your weapon. 11, which is a dagger, a baton, taser, or pistol. Uh, investigative gear, once again, a D20, and I rolled a 15, which is an ancient tome. Cool. And then a memento, which is a D10. And that is a seven, which is a book filled with names in another's handwriting. I wonder how I got that. Hmm. Bonus items. Uh, let's roll another D20. 15. And I have a weapon. Cool. And I, there's weapons list later on that we will pick our weapon. So here's the party uh, questions. Uh, why has the party come together? Use the answers to get to know your character's section. So by answering uh, this question, we'll know why. Six investigators, either professional or amateur, that are looking, to, looking into an event. What are our bonds? Have each player... State a relationship to another character at the table. Some examples. 
is this. So let's just randomly roll this. Um, so um, our friend next sitting next to us is my drinking buddy. And uh, vehicles determine a, as a group what type of vehicles or transportation the party has access to uh, for car chases, etc. as is quite common in uh, a lot of modern horror. Here, as mentioned before, is equipment lists and then there's weapons. So if we were to choose another weapon, uh, just say we chose a taser before, let's choose a pistol. That's quite pricey comparatively. So it didn't say, so I'm gonna take advantage of that. Explosives, modern day potions. Here's some other gear that might come in handy and the cost to it. Okay, so we have our abilities. Once again, strength, dexterity, and control, which is replacing uh, willpower in, uh, into the odd and Karen. And then the, the rules and the mecha mechanics are essentially the same as um, those uh, games I just mentioned, which is you're saving. Uh, so you're trying to roll a D20 and get under whatever your strength, dexterity, and control is in order to be successful, equal to or under. And so if you wanted to lift something, you would uh, do it against your strength. Let's say my strength was... Uh, uh, to say average at uh, nine or 10, and I got a 19, I would have failed that miserably. And then there's some reaction tables, armor and stability. This is another uh, kind of addition. I don't know if it's been used in other games, but uh, stability allows you to um, uh, take stress. So if you might get that from... Uh, a decorative or trinket or something like that. So it's like essentially cosmic armor that uh, reduces the amount of uh, stress that you would receive versus just like armor would, uh, plate mail armor would reduce your stress, not that you would wear it in a modern day setting. Uh, and actually speaking of that, modern day settings, and I think one of the things that I like about maybe a lot of modern games is like armor can be like a finicky thing. And sometimes you go like, you watch a movie or something like that, nobody wears armor. Like, I mean, it's just clunky, right? So sometimes I actually prefer some of these modern games just doing away with armor altogether and the um, stability and stress uh, as actually a way of kind of circumventing official armor. And then deprivation and fatigue, uh, those fill up slots. If you uh, end up being deprived or fatigued, then you're, um, encumbrance kind of takes a hit and you can't have as much stuff in a game like this probably not as relevant because you're not dungeon crawling but anyways it is a mechanism there inventory uh, as we've talked about there's the slot system that's been made uh, very popular um i think in uh i credit ben milton with the uh, the slot system but uh can't officially say but i i'm pretty sure uh inventory associates and uh, well, and once again, we talked about uh, you know successes, failures, similar to the saves, the rounds, which are very typical for most games, actions, retreat, attacking, damage, criticals. Once again, if uh, you know D twenty in five E is good, in this not good because you're trying to roll under. And then there's other you know, nuances that uh, we don't need to get into, but with uh, multiple attackers, dual weapons, attack modifiers, blast, critical damage, critical stress, and fallout. And then the stress uh, comes off your control, uh, whereas like physical damage comes off your strength. And then death and uh, detachments and morale. If, um, if NPCs desire to survive, they might leave. And then a magic system is uh you know in a supernatural world is pretty important so there's a formula for creating spells and uh there's a d6 by d6 matrix so you have the going across and then going down so let's just make one spell just to see how it works so we got the five so we're on the second table and we're going to roll another one so we got another five so it's an ethereal effect and a physical element so if you go over to the table an ethereal effect and the physical element so you got basically those two. Uh, so the spell is, let's just pick uh, Deceiving and Clay. So um, what could you do with that? Like you would make something out of uh, clay that would be deceiving or could be made into something that uh, you wanted it to be in fashion to be. So there you go, you've got a spell. And then there's Omens and Catastrophes if something were to go wrong. 
uh, scrolls and relics, you can read a uh, scroll once and whatever action is on the scroll takes place. And uh, then there's some other relics that uh, are examples. And I'm sure you could come up with your own of different charges that you could use and the different spells or magic that would follow, come from it. Uh, as mentioned before, the stress and fallout uh, comes when things happen to you in the game, uh, you know, like Cthulhu, uh, if you come across something supernatural or, or terrifying, you might be uh, making some uh, saves. And same with here, you get one stress or D4 stress if you have come in contact with it, D6 if you have exposure, D8 if there's a catastrophe, or D10 if there's doom. And then there's a stress follow table, which is on the following pages. So I think that's it. D20. I'm going to roll a D20 here. And I got a 13. Lucky 13. And that is the seventh son of a seventh son. Enough exposure has shifted and changed you. You are more connected to the otherworldly. Add magic from page 18, 19 to your character sheet and follow the rules. This new power is great and terrible. The first time you use the spell, it causes 1d6 stress. Your second spell causes d4 stress. And finally, the third spell you cast causes one stress. And here is a paranatural uh, bestiary, cultist, frogman, special agent, mother, uh, the dark, child of the spore, corporate analyst, witch, ghost, the swarm, flesh smith, company man, drone. And here's a way to create your own monsters because, uh, you know, it's kind of fun to do that. And so here's some kind of general principles on how to uh, do that. And some spark tables um, that can inspire ideas to generate. So let's uh, just do a quick spark table here. The first word. So let's uh, roll a die. 18, which is a shifting. And nine, which is heart. Uh, here's a way to create your own mystery or some guidance. Um, so you can create a list of films, concept, factions and their goals, doom clock, hooks, potential clues, NPCs and locations. So that's like, you know, just a really good framework. Uh, at the, the, this is basically a table of contents, but th these are all the items that you need. And so they provide a really good example here, the Plague of Frogs. And here's some touchstones, uh, the comic Plague of Frogs, Reanimator is a film, Aliens is a film, and the concept. And then from there, you can create your factions and goals. You have Dr. Shelley, Frog Monsters, the Archivist, the Authorities, and then the Doom Clock or actions taken by the investigators that change the progression of the doom clock. The progression below is what would happen if the investigators don't intervene. Changes to the doom clock should uh, consider the goals of the factions at play. So here's what's going to happen. And that's uh, one other thing I really like about OSR is that the, you live in the world and the world is happening and they actually don't care whether you exist or not. And so you might be able to interfere in their plans, but the plans are underway. And here's some other hooks that you can um, add into as an example and some potential clues based upon the adventure and some monsters and some NPCs. So you've got like a ready to go uh, first adventure in the game, including a location of Dr. Shelley's clinic and the sewers, and then some notes on things that can go wrong in the sewers and where the fog piece altar is. And then a nice page for a uh, rule summary that has all that other content just kind of dense, condensed into one page. And then finally, your character sheet with a, a lot of room for um, notes. And, you know, that's pretty typical of maybe an OSR game. Uh, character sheets are generally uh, what they say is don't look to your character sheet for the answer. You uh, are a player in the game and your creativity is part of the game in the OSR. So Liminal Hole, uh, or sorry, so uh, Liminal Horror uh, by uh, Goblin Archives. Cool game. Uh, it's, uh, I think, gaining a lot of traction in the uh, modern horror space. And uh, I know that uh, the Bureau looks uh, to be a really uh, awesome uh, adventure in this. And I know that there's some other ones uh, as part of the bundle that uh, 
it's like um, that uh, you can use the rules and just kind of jump in and get a game rolling within a few uh, minutes. So fun game. Uh, check it out and don't forget to enter. There's only 10 more days before we do our big draw on Halloween. And you can get a $200 store credit at Exalted Funeral. There is another pack of uh, Forbidden Psalms uh, for Morkborg Miniatures uh, games. So there's three books in that. And then there's also Long Winter by Luther Reitz. And there's also the um, Rune Cairn by Odin's Beard that will be. And there's probably going to be a few more announcements. So keep watching to find out or follow us on Twitter. Um, all the links are in below. And uh, until the next one, I'll talk to you then. Happy Halloween, ladies.